Hi, everyone. I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by John Yao, trombonist, composer, band leader, assistant professor of trombone at Berklee College of Music, and adjunct professor of music at Malloy College. John is here to discuss building melodic material. Thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate you having me. Uh, I'm really excited to, to get a chance to talk to you all about how some tools, simple tools for building melodic material using 12 tone rows. Um, and I would encourage you to check out some of the other videos that have been posted by um, Scott Nimmer, Darcy, Erica. There's a lot of great videos of um, people talking about different ways you can tw use 12 tone rows in your big band compositions. Um, and I'm here to talk with you about some different ways that some ways that I've used for my um, for my big band. So. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is talk about just creating some smaller groups from a 12 tone row. So if you look at this first slide, you can see uh, I've kind of boxed out three, four note groups, two, uh, two note groups, um, just from this 12 tone row. And uh, you know you can create as many groups as you want from any version of the row. It could be the prime row, it could be inversion, it could be retrograde, retrograde inversion. Um, you can create these what four note groups, which would be called tetrachords or uh, three note group uh, trichord, and you can do a lot with these. Just these three and four note groups, and so we're going to show you some ways that you can transform them to create um, some melodic material. Um, the first way that we're going to use, uh, first tool we're going to use is called octave displacement. So if you look at this slide here, you can see that I've taken this simple. Um, four note group here, which I'll play for you real quick. And I've just moved some of these notes up and down an octave. So the second group is the same, same sounding pitches, but just in different ranges. Or even... And so by bumping some of these notes up and down an octave, I've created a totally different shape, which has given me a, you know, a different sound. Um, and allows for some different harmonic motion. And it's a really simple way to kind of get um, a, a different contour with your, your trichords and tetrachords. And you can apply this to any version of the row too. If you wanted to take the row itself or um, you know, the retrograde row or inversion or in retrograde inversion and create different shapes with all 12 notes by moving them up and down an octave, it's a really useful way to get some different, uh, different sounds out of the row. Uh, the next way that we're going to talk about changing the row is reordering the notes and thank you. So you look at this next slide here, I've taken this um, same group here and I've just changed the order of the notes within these, uh, these four notes. So, or even, and again, I've only kind of put a few up here as examples. There's tons of permutations that you can explore. Lots of lots of uh, options that you can you know, come up with by reordering the notes within those four note groups. Um, and then you start to combine that with octave displacement, and you've got a whole host of you know uh, material that you're generating. And that's what you're looking to do: just create a lot of material. So you can figure out what you're going to do with it with it later. Um, the uh, third way that we're going to look at is um, this idea of transposition. And it's just taking uh, a one of these four, three and four note groups and transposing all four notes up or down any interval that you like. So this is a different four note group. Um, you know, so you could transpose it, you know, down a major third like I have here. Or even up a half step. And so now I've started to create some, some harmonic motion just by, by transposing it up and down different intervals. And again, you could take it through all the intervals you want. Um, and once you start combining that with octave displacement, and then of course the different rotations and reordering the notes within the three and four note groups, you've created a lot of material. Um, and just a simple act of moving it up and down an interval has you know, created um, some motion, which is what you're looking for. Um, and so these are some of the techniques that I explored in my 2015 album, uh, Flip Flop, on the title track, Flip Flop. And so um, in this example, we'll take a listen to it, and you can see that I chose to you know, write these unison lines, which were spread around the band. And 
using these techniques. And I decided not to, to go for any specific harmony accompanying with it. I just gave the rhythm section, told them, you know, fast swing, no tonal center, and just let them groove. And this also created this kind of feeling of open harmonic freedom and allowed for these lines to kind of come through more clearly and you know, be, be the feature. So here's my uh, example, flip flop. be wondering to yourself like you know okay i've generated all this material what do i do with it you know there's there's so much of it and it can get a little overwhelming um and i would just you know urge you to be patient um and i'll give you one uh another simple exercise that you can use with these tricords to kind of to just get the ball rolling which is really what you're looking to do is just try to get get some momentum with them and, and string them together and you know come up with something um and point yourself in a direction so let's take, for example, a 12-tone uh, row, and you take these 12 notes and you chop them up into four three-note groups. So you have four trichords, if you will. Um, and you label, you know, trichord one as A, B, C, D, right? So on. Um, and then you just create an arbitrary order that you're going to uh, present these trichords. It could be, you know, D, C, B, A, B, A, B, B, C, A, whatever, however long you want to go. And then fill in the notes that you know correspond with each group that you've chosen in what order. And now you have a line that you can work with. And you know it might not be something perfect that you're totally happy with, or maybe you stumble on something great. Um, but uh, if there's something you want to change with it, you know now you can take some of these tools we talked about, like octave displacement, um, reordering the notes, or transposition, and using those any of those three tools or any combination of those three tools to transform your line that you created. Um, and it allows you to kind of you know, shape the line however you decide. And again, it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be um, a baseline. It could be a root, you know, progression, um, you know, roots for a chord progression. It could be a counter melody. It could be, you know, a trichord or a tetrachord could be, um, you know, a, uh, a bass vamp. You know, like, so for example, in, in flip flop, I, you know, took uh, a four note group and I put fifths above it and then I transposed it down you know, a third or something like that. And now I have an eight bar vamp that I use for the, you know, beginning of John O'Gallagher's solo on flip flop. So as you can see, there's like no shortage of, of things that these can become. And it's just whatever you decide you want them to become is, is up to you. You might also be asking yourself the question like, you know, does my line have to have harmony that goes with it? Like, how do I create chords that go with this crazy line? And, you know, the answer is like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it can be whatever you want. You can create chords that go with this line and adjust the line to fit the chords. Or you can just, like I did with Flip Flop, just totally blow off any harmony and just, you know, let the rhythm section groove, fast swing, and, and not even worry about trying to create chords that go with your line. Um, so it's totally up to you how you decide to use these, these lines. I hope these simple tools of octave displacement, reordering the notes, and transposition of these trichords and te tetrachords have given you uh, a little peek into some ways you can generate material with the 12-tone row. And uh, I hope that you have fun with it. And just like I said, just let your ears guide yourself over time. And I look forward to, to hearing what you come up with. Thanks. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.